Hi guys, welcome to another beer review. Today we are going back to the Witchwood Brewery and we're going to be looking at the Imperial Red, clocking in at 4.7%, an Imperial Steep Ruby Ale. Quickly read what it says on the back. Do not fear the Imperial Red who comes in peace to liberate your taste buds with his robust yet succulent beer. Um, insert certain words in certain places. A toasted malt flavour balanced by a bold, pronounced hop delivered in a rich, russet beer. Enjoy the Imperial Majesty and raise the red standard in celebration. So, uh, yeah, don't think I've ever tried this one, to be honest. Um, and I've heard mixed things from different people. But I actually really quite like Witchwood. Um, it was thanks to the box of character like three or four years ago, maybe a little bit longer actually. Yeah, a little bit longer. That really got me into trying real ales and getting into craft beer and getting into imported beer and all these really well-renowned and, you know, craftier sort of brews and that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, so I've got a lot of time for Witchwood. And you can get all of their beers for really cheap in a lot of places. So it's only time, you know, only fair, I should say, that I should get around to reviewing more of their beers. Because I don't think I've got that many uploaded on the channel. But, um, yeah, before I get into it, was at the Lake District today. Went to the Pooley Bridge area. And um, I'm sure one of the pubs used to be a Marston's pub. But I think... They've Couple of, there's a Robinson's pub and I think Thwaites have took over two of the, well, the other two pubs. So there was no Marston's aside from like the Jennings stuff. So I tried a couple of Jennings beers that I've not tried before. And then um, tried, yeah, like a Robinson's beer. Then we went into Windermere to the White Lion and I tried a couple of other real ales that they were doing. So I had a nice little day of uh, drinking real ales and I've come to really appreciate drinking halves instead of just buying pints all the time because you can just try a lot more. Drink, well, probably the same because you're buying more. Um, but if you get a beer that you're not a big fan of, you don't have you know, a load of it to drink. So I think that's the way to go when I'm going out and stuff like that. But I was very surprised that not in any of the pubs did I see any Witchwood beers. And last time I was in um, the Lake District, um, you know, three out of four of the pubs that we went to, there was at least one Witchwood beer. So um, it just shows you how in such a short amount of time things can change and new beers come in and people take over certain pubs and that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, really interesting stuff for me anyway. So I thought I'd end the night on the Imperial Red, a ruby ale, and uh, yeah, I was going to use my uh, brood dog Teku glass, but God forbid I do that because I don't want to revoke my membership to the UK Craft Beer Forum and page on Facebook, uh, even though you know it's fashionable to bash on brood dog as well. Anyway, uh, using a good old fashioned sort of pint glass. And uh, yeah, so let's get this beer open, waffling on already. And I apologise about this like big circle of light which sort of distorts the video. Um, my little brother's taken over what was my bedroom, so I'm in his and it's like got this like creamy eggshell wall and the light just bounces off it. Cannot find solid lighting it seems, no matter where I go. So anyway, let's just get the beer poured and see what we get. So, yeah, it's pouring like a ruby ale, as if, you know, you pour something that wasn't a ruby ale, but was a ruby ale, if you know what I mean. And yeah, it's a ruby colour, um, nice and dark, uh, got nice clarity to it, not too much in terms of carbonation, and what is there is very, very slow up towards the top of the glass, where it goes to that one finger's worth of lightly brown, sort of like a coffee prop head like a mild light coffee froth. But uh, yeah, it's what you expect when you pour a ruby beer. And uh, yeah, it's filtered. But you know, sometimes that's not a bad thing. Anyway, let's give it a sniff. Well, I pick up like the caramel. I pick up like a toffee, nutty sort of aroma. Bit of grass, hay, that sort of thing. 
maybe a hint of cinnamon and vanilla right in the background, just add a nice little bit of sweetness to it. Sweetness. Apparently that means sweetness. But yeah, and then you do get some sort of hop character in there as well, like a lightly spiced hop. And um, yeah, it's not too bad on the nose. Although, there's like a slight, um, you know, you get that like those artisan, like um, honey and cinnamon soap, you know, handmade, handmade soap bars. Sort of reminds you of something like that, maybe a little bit of fudge as well. Cakey, it's a bit more sweeter as it settles, I suppose. But yeah, not bad at all on the aroma. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Interesting. Well, this the the mouth feels a bit weird because it's not thin and it's not thick, but it's got like a sense of a slight wateriness to it. Xbox keeps going offline. Internet is absolutely shocking back in well in our house anyway. Yeah, you get like a slight bready, cakey ginger nut biscuit I'd say. Little hints of vanilla in there. Slight caramel, toffee malts, that sort of thing. But then you get this like strange hop character coming in and I don't think it goes well with the ruby beer. Especially in this instance. I mean, it's not really sitting too right with me. I mean it's not a drain pour or anywhere near that. It's still got, you know, good sense of quality to it. But I don't know, this it's like a weird juxtaposition when the hops come in. <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't think it completely works. For my palate at least. Yeah. I mean it's nice. It's definitely not a run of the mill, but it's not the most flavoursome of beers, to be honest. And it sort of reminds me of just maybe a slightly hoppier version of the regular Hobgoblin. But um, yeah, in terms of Ruby Ales, it's not the best that I've had, but it's by far the worst. So I think in terms of a rating, I'm going to give this maybe a 6 out of 10. It's drinkable, it's nice, it's just that weird hop character and the bitterness that comes from the hops, which I don't really think works. Um, maybe some people think it does, uh, if this is one of your favourite which will be is, of course, I mean, no offence by that. Um, I mean, I'm a big fan of which would, like I've said. But this, for me, it's probably the least favourite of the beers that I've tried. Um, with Arrowvane probably being the weakest actually but um, yeah I, I'd drink it again if it was there but I wouldn't go out my way to pick it up there are plenty more beers that are available through Witchwood that I would pick over this one but if you like your sort of hoppier sort of um, ruby ales then definitely give it a try so that's the Imperial Red Imperia Steep Ruby Ale, 4.7% from Witchwood. Uh, if you've tried it, let me know your thoughts and opinions. What are your thoughts and opinions on Witchwood and what are your favourite beers from Witchwood if you are a fan. So, thank you for watching and I shall hopefully see you in the next video. Cheers.